It's now a very great joy to welcome Dr. Keith Wallace. Dr. Robert Keith Wallace received his PhD in physiology from the University of California at Los Angeles and did his postdoctoral research at Harvard Medical School. His seminal papers published in the journals Science, the American Journal of Physiology, and Scientific American showed that transcendental meditation technique, a Vedic technology, produced a fourth major state of consciousness different than waking, dreaming, or sleeping. Dr. Wallace was the founding president of Mahashi University of Management and established the first Mahashi Ayurved clinics in the United States. He has traveled around the world giving lectures at major universities and institutes on Mahashi's consciousness-based health programs and is the author of the book, The Neurophysiology of Enlightenment, The Physiology of Consciousness, and co-author of Victory Before War. Dr. Wallace is currently a trustee of Mahashi University of Management, Dean of the Mahashi College of Perfect Health, Director of Research and Professor and Chairman of the Department of Physiology and Health. Please welcome Dr. Robert Keith Wallace. Dear Shankaracharya, dear Maharaj, dear Swamiji's, it's a great honor to be able to speak to you today on the application of Ved in healthcare and Ved and gene expression. Marshi gave a beautiful definition of health. He said, "Health is wholeness." The Sanskrit word for health is swastya. Swa means self, and sta means established. So health is defined as being established in the self. The self is holistic in nature. Being established in the self means established unshakably in the wholeness of life. Health, therefore, means possession of the self. He who possesses the self is described as one who is healthy. As we have heard from Dr. John Hagelin, the self, pure consciousness, atma, is the unified field of natural law. Perfect health means being established in the unified field. When individual life is established in the unified field of all the laws of nature, the self, all actions are spontaneously in accord with natural law. According to Marshi's Vedic approach to health, ill health is caused by the lack of proper knowledge of how to live life without violating natural law. With poor daily routine, improper diet, badly oriented homes, the stress of collective consciousness, and ignorance of the experience of the self, almost every action is a violation of natural law. A truly healthy life means the complete integration of body, mind, and behavior on the ground of a fully awakened consciousness, a fully awakened inner intelligence. This complete wakefulness is only possible when our consciousness and physiology are fully aligned with the laws of nature, which give rise to and govern every aspect of life. Maharshi's genius was to show that these fundamental laws of nature are themselves Veda and the Vedic literature. Veda is not something exclusive to any culture, religion, or country. Veda is a universal and accurate description of the laws of nature at their finest level. India is indeed the home of this ancient and precious knowledge 
but that does not mean that these laws of nature are Indian or Hindu. Sir Isaac Newton described gravity in England, but neither of these facts makes gravity British or Christian. Marshy demonstrated that far from being stories or hymns, the Ved and Vedic literature are remarkably precise descriptions of the self-interacting dynamics of the unified field. As Marshy explained, the Ved in its original script is just the whisper of the unified field to itself. The Vedic literature is the record of the primordial sounds of nature, which are the patterns of intelligence unfolding within pure consciousness and which eventually create the body. We can consider the Vedic seers as ancient scientists who through the development of higher states of consciousness were able to use their nervous systems as a kind of instrument to look within and to directly experience these primordial sounds in consciousness as the impulses of the unified field interacting with itself. In the fully awakened state of pure consciousness, the very nature of the underlying threads of the fabric of consciousness begin to reveal themselves to themselves. The records of the experience, experiences of the great seers are in one sense similar to the records of experiments in modern scientific journals. They are results based on a systematic and repeatable experimental methodology, an inner technology of consciousness. Their object of inquiry was the laws of nature. But unlike modern objective scientific experiments, their methodology was subjective and their laboratory the field of pure consciousness. In order to have these experiences in a reliable and systematic manner, the first Vedic scientists had to be experts in the appropriate technology, in this case, the Vedic technologies of consciousness. They had to refine the functioning of their own nervous systems in order to be able to experience and continue to develop higher states of consciousness. Marshi explains that the Vedic seers perceive these laws of nature as reverberations of primordial sound, the mantras of the Ved, within their own consciousness. Precisely because the Vedic method of gaining knowledge depends upon a fully developed nervous system, its main field of inquiry, the experience of inner self, became inaccessible when the procedures to gain higher states of consciousness were no longer readily available. And this is the dilemma of waking state consciousness. If our consciousness is confined to only waking, dreaming, or sleeping states, then we cannot become true knowers of reality as described in the Vedic tradition. Over the long course of history, as the experience of pure consciousness faded in the daily life of people, the knowledge of Ved became greatly misunderstood and misinterpreted. This situation was further complicated when the Vedic texts were written down and eventually translated into other languages. What remained were superficial outer trappings of experience of true knowledge. As Maharishi commented, the study of the Ved is not through the books of the Ved. The study of the Ved is from what is inscribed in the pure consciousness of the individual student himself. Without the actual experience of pure consciousness, the student of the Ved can taste only the outer peel of the fruit of knowledge, while the nourishing fruit inside is unsuspected and left untouched. With this situation, the natural fullness of life 
which is our human heritage, gradually diminished, and suffering became normal to the experience of life. With Maharshi's restoration of the complete knowledge and experience of the Ved, the technologies of consciousness have once again become widely available. For over 50 years, Maharshi met with scientists, including Nobel Prize winners, such as Dr. Melvin Calvin, Nobel Prize winner in biology, and Dr. Brian Josephson and Dr. Ilya Priyogin, Nobel Prize winners in physics and chemistry. He spent many hundreds of hours discussing with these scientists the remarkable correlations between Vade and scientists. And that discussion continued over and over again, particularly with such brilliant scientists as Dr. Hagelin, helping these scientists to evolve the correct terminology in order to properly communicate Veda in the language of modern science. He encouraged hundreds of scientific studies, particularly on the transcendental meditation technique, which were published in top scientific, top scientific and medical journals. We've already heard a brief summary of these remarkable results from Dr. Michael Dilbeck and other scientists. The collective body of scientific research documenting the benefits of the Transcendental Meditation and TM City program and other prevention-oriented approaches of Maharishi's Vedic approach to health contain more than 600 studies conducted at over 250 universities in 30 countries and published in more than 175 research journals. Among this body of research are a number of scientific studies on treating chronic illness with Vedic technologies. Most prominent are those done on the transcendental meditation technique. But in addition, there are studies on the use of Maharshi Ayurveda and Maharshi Vedic vibration technology and other Vedic technologies revived by Maharshi. In one study here, it examined the statistics of a global health insurance company over a five-year period, looking at some 2,000 people in a number of categories of chronic disease. The TM group had consistently lower rates of hospitalization and doctor visits compared to the average of all other groups. In each category of disease, the TM group's recourse to medical care proved to considerably be less than the industri industry norms across the board. 87% less for heart disease, 55% less for cancer, 65% less for metabolic disorders, including diabetes, and 87% less for diseases of the nervous system. In a further study, which focused on also the addition of some of the Maharshi Ayurveda technologies, we can see a further improvement, a quite dramatic improvement in those doing a, maybe over 30% in some conditions, further improvement in those practicing Maharshi Ayurveda. In a double-blind and randomized experimental study led by Dr. Tony Nader, 177 76 subjects with arthritis utilized Maharshi Vedic vibration technology and showed significant improvements as compared to controls. In a second published study, also utilizing the Maharshi Vedic vibration technology, there was again a marked improvement in a wide variety of chronic disorders. A follow-up study of several thousand case studies on individuals using Vedic sound with the Maharshi Vedic vibration technology has continued to show improvements in, in a very wide variety of different conditions. Over the last 20 years, this research has become increasingly sophisticated and has been supported by over $25 million in grants from the National Institutes of Health and other US government agencies. And we will hear shortly from Dr. Robert Schneider about many of these studies, especially in the area of cardiovascular disease, 
the results clearly demonstrate the practical value of Vedic technologies for health. India is the ancient home of the procedures and most profound knowledge of the development of human physiology. This knowledge is contained in all the different branches of the Vedic literature, but particularly in yoga and in Ayurveda. And the goal of these areas of knowledge is the perfect functioning of mind and body, eventually resulting in the ultimate development of health and enlightenment. In Marshi's revival of yoga, he clearly brings out the importance of effortless transcending as a means of experiencing samadhi, the inner self. He also explained that it is through the process of transcending that we refine the functioning of our nervous system and create the basis for gaining enlightenment. Enlightenment, like perfect health, can be defined as the ability to act in accord with natural law. For the first time in the history of the world, enlightenment is explained not as something remote and difficult or mystical. As Maharishi said, there is no reason today in our scientific age for anyone to remain unenlightened. In 1974, Professor B.K. Anand from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences invited me to give one of the main lectures at the 26th International Congress of Physiological Sciences in New Delhi. During my talk, which was entitled The Neurophysiology of Enlightenment, I brought out Maharishi's beautiful knowledge that enlightenment had been taken out of the realm of mysticism and uncertainty and shown to be a specific reality that is verifiable, universally available, and of immense practical value. What Maharishi had shown is that enlightenment is for everyone. It is innate in our physiology. And as a human be being, we deserve to have it. The first results on the transcendental meditation technique physiological studies were shown at this conference. And the speech was given to some 1,000 physiologists, some of which who were all my professors in school. I was quite young at the time, and it was quite an overwhelming experience to do this. But Maharishi had created this beautiful book, The Neurophysiology of Enlightenment, and had, in fact, put my picture in the book. And I explained to Maharishi, Maharishi, at a scientific conference, you can't put your picture in a brochure and hand it out to all the scientists. Said, no, 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 this is what we do. And this was then given out to all these various scientists and subsequent to that I was invited to speak at many, many different universities and institutes, including right after that for the first time to Poland to give a talk on the neurophysiology of enlightenment. This early research has been so much more sophisticated in the last few years. Fortunately, Dr. Fred Travis, who will be speaking to you, Tomorrow, we'll go very deeply into this and really give you a very precise idea of these neurophysiological correlates of higher states of consciousness. One of the most exciting and recent studies, which has just come out, is in the area of DNA and gene expression. Why is this so important? As Maharishi explained, as the universe is the expression of aid, the body is the expression of DNA. Maharishi loved DNA. He talked about DNA all the time as that constitution of the universe within our body, which parallels the Ved in the universe. DNA itself is the material expression of the self-interacting dynamics of consciousness. Maharishi used to say the, va the Ved rides on the back of DNA the backbone of DNA. When information from the expression of genes from DNA becomes distorted, cells lose their memory of what they are supposed to do, and imbalances arise in the physiology. The consciousness approaches of yoga and Ayurveda offer a unique way to reconnect the material structure of the physiology with the self-referral dynamics of intelligence at its basis. According to Vade, consciousness is primary.
everything arises from consciousness, including our physiology. The most recent research has just been conducted as a PhD thesis at Marshall University of Management has looked at over 70 genes that are expressed differently as a result of the practice of transcendental meditation. This shows that by enlivening the self-interacting dynamics of nature's functioning from the level of pure consciousness, we begin to educate the DNA such that the full memory of our genetic potential is expressed correctly. In the Vedic tradition, this restoration is called smriti labda, memory, I have regained memory. Once Maharishi established the scientific basis of yoga through the Transcendental Meditation and TM City program, he then turned his attention to Ayurveda. He revived the beautiful link between yoga and Ayurveda and again showed that consciousness is primary for achieving perfect health. He worked very closely with many of the very great experts in traditional Ayurveda, including the late Dr. Brihaspati Dev Triguna, Dr. Balraj Maharshi, and Dr. V. M. Devedi. In order to restore the completeness of this knowledge, he encouraged scientific research and had these experts speak at such prominent forums in the U.S. as the National Institutes of Health, Johns Hopkins Medical School, Yale Medical School, Harvard School of Public Health, and Massachusetts General Hospital. In April of this year, we will be holding an important conference in Holland, which will include many prominent Ayurvedic experts from India, including Dr. Triguna's son, Dr. Devinder Triguna, along with important doctors from Europe and America. And this has been organized by Dr. Raina Pisha, the chairman of the International Marshi Ayurveda Foundation for Health Professionals. Marshi continued to dive deeply into the Veda and many branches of Vedic literature. And certainly, one of Marshi's greatest achievements was to inspire Dr. Tony Nader, Maharaj Adiraj Rajram, who spoke to you yesterday and continues to speak to us, to come to this phenomenal discovery of Ved and Vedic literature in the human physiology. This is really the greatest scientific achievement of our age. There's nothing greater than this. It shows that every individual is cosmic, that the essence of the entire field of modern objective science and ancient subjective science. This is such a profound realization, showing us that every expression, every syllable, every richa, every sukta, every mandala can be found as distinct structures in our human physiology. Indeed, he has located the whole of Veda embodied in the physiology. And this intimate relation between Veda and human physiology is evident because one is merely a reflection of the other. Dr. Nader's discovery reveals that our individual physiology is indeed the physiology of the universe. This realization is expressed in the Vedic aphorism, Aham Brahmasmi, I am the unbounded totality, I am wholeness. We hope to show you later in the conference, as time permits, a video demonstration of the model of Vedic physiology developed by Dr. Nader under Marshi's inspiration. But far more than a theoretical discovery, this is a discovery of immense practical value. Our human physiology is constructed from the sounds of the Veda, and by using the proper sequential unfoldment of these sounds as recorded in the Vedic literature, we can reset the inner intelligence of the body thus removing balances and restoring order in the physiology, thereby treating a wide variety of diseases, as I showed in those earlier slides, which used Vedic sound therapy. Marshi spent a great deal of time in planning an ideal Vedic India. And he focused a great deal of his attention on a new state-of-the-art health program. 
He recognized that modern healthcare is fragmented because it's based on partial knowledge with the emphasis on disease. And as a result, we can just see all the rise in chronic disease and all the problems such as the bad side effects from modern medicine. He recognized that we had to create a new integrative system of medicine, one that uses the most effective practices of modern medicine with the most powerful and ancient technologies of Vedic science, including yog, Ayurveda, Stipatyaveda, Jyotish, and Yajna, and all the other technologies. These technologies enliven the body's inner intelligence and establish perfect health in every individual and in every nation. Dr. Schneider will be discussing later this afternoon a beautiful plan inspired by Maharishi to introduce this complete system of health throughout India and the world. And it involves the creation of a network of Maharishi health centers to effectively prevent disease and reduce the burden of chronic disease, as well as establishment of Maharishi colleges of perfect health and organic herbal gardens and pharmacies, all constructed according to the principles of Stipatyaved. I first met Maharishi in 1964, and for all the many years I was blessed knowing Maharishi, there was never a day that Maharishi was not thinking of how to relieve the suffering of the world. His compassion was unbounded. We are so grateful to Maharishi for what he brought to both the West and to India for reviving this extraordinary and beautiful knowledge of the Ved. I'd just like to end with a quote from Maharishi. When the total intelligence of natural law of Ved is lively in the individual physiology, there is perfect synchrony between the functioning of every individual cell and the holistic functioning as the body as a whole and between individual intelligence and cosmic intelligence. In this state of complete integration, all thought and action are spontaneously in harmony with natural law, and the individual enjoys perfect health. Thank you very much.